Hi, I'm Tim Marshall. Welcome to R&B Showcase. We have a very special show here today. First, I want to introduce my co-host here today. Mr. Kevin White is in the building. What's happening, Kevin? How you doing, Tim? Good to be with you. We also got with us... Uh, most of the time, co-host. Kyle, <laughs> Kyle most, Mack is here. <laughs> most of the time, co-host and full-time producer. Yes, so. but, but he's my full-time producer. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And thank you, Kyle. It's yes. been quite a day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. I tell stories have, off here. We have a guest co-host uh, joining us here today. and He's on the radio show prior to us, and I'm going to let him tell us about What is the name of your show, sir? So my show is called My Bear Sweet Philosophy. All it's right. On, uh, every Sunday, 3 to 5 on 106.5 FM in All right. Philadelphia. And you're talking to Julian. Julian, welcome yes, to the sir. show here today. Thank you for having me. Thank you for sitting in on this. And we have these young gentlemen here sitting with us, and they're helping to extend this legacy of Motown. You don't know how happy you just made Kevin by calling yes. him young. Yes, I did. I made him feel great. <laughs> yes, he's great. But we're honored to, to have these next two gentlemen going to introduce to you because, you know, it's been a long time coming for the Spinners to be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So let's give a nice rousing round of applause to Mr. John Edwards and Mr. Ronnie Moss. Yes. yes. Congratulations. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Well, wow, this is really an honor to have both of you gentlemen here with us. You know, we have the future of the spinners and we have a young gentleman who, um, by the name of Mr. John Edwards, who's on a lot of those classic recordings that, you know, like working my way back to you, Cupid, Funny how time slips away. One of my favorites, Magic in the Moonlight. <laughs> I've forgotten all about that. Yeah, that's, that's one of my favorites. I've seen you do that live in Philadelphia when, in, in the concert. Uh, I think Butterball from DAS was the host of that concert, and John Edwards and the Spinners came down and performed. And then um, we also have Ronnie Moss, who's on the current album called Round the Block and Back Again. So welcome you both to the show, ma'am. This, this is an honor to have you here with us. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure being here. Thank you. And and I want to say congratulations to you both. And, and congratulations on the spinners. It's been, what, four times, I think, they were trying to get uh, the spinners into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Yeah. Yeah. Four times. Four times. We finally got I know Henry's got to be happy. Henry Fambro, the uh, original member of the spinners, has got to be yeah. happy with you guys. But, yeah, he uh, is. And no question about it. So so I want to ask you, how did it feel? Because, Ronnie, most recently you were part of this uh, thing they had at Motown Museum they, where they honored the spinners. And uh, you guys all came together. Even G.C. Cameron was there as part of that. Tell us about that event. Ronnie. Um, it was wonderful. It was an event that, uh, that uh, I, as you know, in the past, the Spinners was really um, not with Motown uh, a long time. You know, they, mm -hmm. they struggled until they were able to leave and go to Atlantic Records, as you know. And, uh, but for them to reach out to, to the spinners and make us feel um, warm and, and, and wanted, it, it, it really it was an honor to be there with all the press and some of the alumni that was with Motown was there as well. And, uh, and then, of course, the... Uh, the suits, the the uniforms that was donated to the museum, mm -hmm. that was enough. Yeah, it was yeah. great. It was great to see you guys all together singing and, and performing on stage there. And uh, Kevin, you got one of the albums from that era, from the 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 uh, era. I do, from, I do. So what, what's the album you got, got there for us? The, one of the first uh, biggest hit albums. Second that, uh, time around. Second time around. That was that featured. It's a shame at Motown. Um, would you both of you gentlemen yeah. performed that live in concert uh, for the Spinners. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> written by Stevie Wonder, one of the great classic hits. So, right, right. So, so um, that, that's been great. And then, uh, John, we're going to also talk about your inclusion into the, into the Spinners. You kind of came in there, right? what, 70s, 76, 77? 77. Okay. How was uh, that for you? Well, it was uh, a shock to the system, I would say. <laughs> Tell us about it. <laughs> because, uh, I had been living in Florida, and uh, the spinners came down to Florida to do uh, uh, a couple of shows, and I had no idea that uh, I was going to wind up being uh, a part of this organization until... Uh, uh, Billy, one of the original members of the Spinners, mm -hmm. 
was talking with uh, my manager at the time, Dr. Uh, Cecil Graham. Okay. And uh, Doc was uh, telling uh, Billy about me, and uh, Billy said uh, they were having uh, a bit of a problem with the personnel that uh, was in the group at the time, and uh, they were thinking about trying to uh, make some sort of a uh, change in the lineup. And uh, Dr. Graham was uh, telling uh, Billy about me, and I wasn't aware of these uh, goings on at all at the time. And Billy came to a show that I was doing, and uh, he, I guess, was so impressed uh, with my performance that he uh, uh, went back to uh, Detroit and told the rest of the guys about me, and... uh, Doc got a call from Billy about a week or so later, and uh, Billy was asking Doc if I would be available to come to Detroit to uh, do an interview. And we arranged for me to fly into Detroit, and I met the guys, and uh, we had a nice time, and I guess uh, they asked me all the pertinent uh, questions that were demanded. And uh, next thing I knew, Billy uh, was calling Doc and uh, was telling Dr. Graham that they were interested in me becoming a part of the group. And I, I flew in and uh, about about a week or so later, uh, Billy and Bobby, the uh, original lead singer for the Swingers, they called and we were all on the phone. And uh, uh, Billy was asking if I was interested in joining the group. And uh, hey. I had heard of the spinners. <laughs> yeah, I heard those guys. Some fantastic work. I didn't know how I would fit into the organization. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't until I got to Detroit that I found out that I was supposedly going to replace uh, Felipe Wynn, who mm-hmm. was the lead singer at that time. Mm-hmm. And Felipe had decided he was going on uh, his own and they needed a uh, replacement for them, uh, for Felipe. I didn't know that I was uh, uh, really in the uh, conversation uh, to join the group. But uh, after we uh, got back to Miami, uh, Doc got another call about a few days later, and uh, they were asking me to fly up to Detroit to uh, join the group. Hmm. And uh, I said yes. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, do you have the question? Yeah, hey John. So, um, you have you were in a position that uh, a lot of uh, groups were under. You talk about maybe the transition from when David Ruffin left the Temptations and then Dennis Edwards coming in behind. You are following somebody who uh, left such a huge mark on the entity, and I'm wondering. What is the pressure like for a new person coming in to take on the role of someone who really left a big footprint uh, before they left? Listen, it, uh, like man, the pressure. 
it, it is an enormous amount of pressure to uh, to step into that role. The spinners have been, as long as I can remember, the spinners have always been at the forefront of the music uh, industry and population. And uh, uh, I would I would think that anybody who would would be asked to step into a role to replace Felipe Wynn with this group would be not only honored but scared to mm. death. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no way. Uh, that's a good question. Um, also, yeah. Ronnie, I would ask you that same question. What was it like for you? Because you're coming behind this gentleman sitting next to you. And GC Cameron and Felipe and all the, the the lead singers before you. What was it like for you coming into this group? It was like John said. It it it, it was very nerve wracking because I came in to replace uh, uh, Bobby, mm -hmm. and when Bobby left, I mean, you know, when 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 I came in to replace him, it was. Uh, I mean, I seen comments. <laughs> yeah, I seen comments. <laughs> okay, um, was like, I don't know if he could do. I don't know if he could do this. I don't know if he could do that. It's gonna be rough, you know. And then that are that already makes me nervous. Mm -hmm. And then you gotta learn the show. I was nervous. I was nervous being around Henry. I was nervous <laughs> of everything. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah, it, it was rough. Mm. It was rough. Mm -hmm. Well, you had a, a very interesting, your entrance into the group was interesting and, and not too dissimilar from that maybe of like the Four Tops, where uh, Levi Stubbs was still in the group when Theo Peoples joined. And then when Levi had to separate, Theo Peoples stepped over from background to to uh, front man. Now, when you came in, yes, you were replacing Bobby, but M Marvin Taylor was already in the group. And now... Uh, when Bobby passed away, Marvin steps in to do the leads that Bobby did, and now you're filling in that role. Uh, was it easy for the group to make that kind of side uh, sideways switch? Because I know um, Bobby, I mean, uh, Marvin used to actually sing a lot of the high tenor stuff before you joined the group. Yeah, um, uh, Marvin, uh, he, he suggested myself because it was where, you know, it was, it was, he felt like I should be doing the higher parts, and and he and I said, "Okay, look, you do Bobby stuff," which I was okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> I was okay doing what I'm doing as of today. I really enjoy doing coming in and then going back. I like doing. I'm that kind of person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and Marvin was. He's more. Uh, Byron is a, a, a good front man, and and he was able to do Bobby. I think he, he did Bobby better than me because his voice is a little lower than mine. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he made it, he, he was more effective. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. I have a question actually for both of you. Um, both of you guys had, you know, pretty, you know, strong solo careers starting and going on and moving mm -hmm. before you joined mm -hmm. the group. Um, what was it like to kind of, you know, put that aside, you know, that idea of being a solo artist um, to join a group? Well, well, for me, it was uh, strange <laughs> and, <scary. laughs> and sort of befuddling all at once. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, I, I can only uh, speak to the fear that I felt mm. because when I, when I was living in Florida, I was solo at, mm -hmm. and I had not done any dancing <laughs> at, the, at the disco. Gotcha. Uh. <laughs> so, so trying to sing 
and move mm. my two feet at the same time. Mm-hmm. First tragic. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> eventually, I eventually got got the hang of it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Excellent. That's funny. Hey, uh, John. Um, it, it has to be said that you um, are a vocalist, especially on, on the hits uh, with the spinners. Uh, that a lot of people who come after you probably have tried to emulate a lot. Um, and a lot of that has to be said for a incredibly dynamic vocal range mm-hmm. that is exhibited on these yes. songs uh, from your wide chest voice to really soaring falsetto notes. If you just listen to the last five seconds of, of either Cupid, yep, yeah, Cupid. It's or, unbelievable. Or, you know? or working my way back. Mm-hmm. You hit these astronomical high notes. My question is, is that type of thing, because I'm, I'm as a vocalist myself, I try to do that all the time. As a vocalist mm-hmm. myself, um, I want to know out of sheer selfish interest, is that something that you just got or do you did you have to work very, very hard for that range of yours? It's incredible range you got there, John. Well, uh, mm-hmm. to answer that question, we just yeah. talked about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we did. We just talked about that. <laughs> this this is something that, with God's blessing, mm-hmm. I was gifted with, mm-hmm. and uh, right. I'm I'm proud that I was able to uh, work as long as I did with the group, and it was something that. Uh, more or less that just came naturally because I was uh, a gospel singer Mm -hmm. before I started singing uh, pop music. And uh, I always, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the guy's name, uh, uh, oh God. He did uh, Funny How Time Slips Away. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Joe Hinton, was it? Joe Hinton? Joe Hinton? Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Joe Hinton. Yeah. And I always admired mm-hmm. his vocal range mm-hmm. and his vocal timing. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he was somebody that I really respected, mm-hmm. and I really respected his ability. And I always love uh, his ending note on Funny How Time mm-hmm. Slips Away. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just tried to emulate and imitate mm-hmm. that uh, ability uh, to the best of my ability. And uh, I, I, I don't know how uh, I was so blessed to get that last note mm. out. <laughs> got it, brother. <laughs> Kyle and I are actually over here sharing a laugh mm-hmm. because um, I think Ronnie has Ronnie actually Moss. seen this video mm-hmm. of Kyle hitting those last right. notes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> From right. that. We mm-hmm. shot it up in, what was it, the showboat? I no, think? it was, it, we, you guys had just performed in resorts at Atlantic right. City. Uh, and I was like, we were in this long hallway that connects two casinos yeah. together with a lot of reverb. This was years ago, back when I had hair. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and uh, and I was like, you know what? I want to do it. I just saw Ronnie do it. It's like, I want to do it now. Mm-hmm. So we, we shot a video of, be, of hitting those uh, those last three notes. Ronnie, about those last three right. notes. We want to ask you about that, Ronnie. I want to ask you, see, now mm-hmm. John, John recorded it. Now you are the one who's performing mm-hmm. it live in concert. Uh, I would like to know... Where is your mind at when there's like the band is no longer there and it's on you. You got to sell those last three notes. Mm -hmm. Maybe you didn't sleep so well the night before. Mm -hmm. Maybe your health is not the greatest or maybe you're perfectly fine. But like what is the average? What is the average mental space when it's on you? The focus on you to hit those three astronomical notes live in the show. Where's your head at? That's funny you asked me because they had they interviewed me on the Soul Train Cruise and had asked me the same question. <laughs> <laughs> they, they actually had me do it at the at the interview, and I was like, okay. <laughs> I, I think for me, um, I'm kind of like John. I, I, I've been doing that all my life, and mm. um, and actually, I don't 
I do not even sing it here at home. I, I don't sing it until I have to do it on stage. Mm. Tell you the truth. But what I do do is um, I make sure that my vocal, my voice is clear, mm-hmm. you know, for that. But it's just a thing that I own. I own it. That's mm-hmm. why I do it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's how I do it. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know no other way but to say it, you know, right. because you are front street. <laughs> right, right, right. You, right. You step out there, you are frustrated, mm-hmm. so you got to do it. Mm-hmm. And you know what? You know? I absolutely love now, because before it hasn't always been the case, but now you sing lead on that song in its, entirely, mm-hmm. in its entirety. Yeah. And I'm like, this is awesome. Mm-hmm. And you're, I, doing, you're doing a great job. Yeah, man. With it, with it, you know, I was, was going to ask you about how I felt to sing that whole entire lead of that song. But um, before we go to Julian, uh, as singers, being lead singers, John and, and, and Ronnie, how do you prepare yourself? I mean, is there any extra preparation you have to do to before you go on stage? Like, you know, I know you can't be out all night. And, you know, how do you prepare yourself as lead singers to do your thing? Well, uh, a lot of friends. <laughs> <laughs> She's and, and, and then I go out and do the best I can. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. all you can do. Okay. Because the audience and the parishioners have paid decent money mm, okay. just for the privilege of hearing your voice. And when it comes to the, uh, the reason why Ronnie and myself have toiled as much as we have over the years to uh, to do what we do is primarily to please the people listening. And uh, A, it is is something that uh, we both are very proud of, and especially me, I'm no longer a member of the group, but... Uh, oh, no, you still a member. Yeah, I was going to say that. <laughs> That's right. right. Once a spinner, you're always a spinner, and you are inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Oh, Come, yeah. On. Yeah. Come on! Come yeah. on! Oh, yes, well, yes. You're always a member of spinners. Yes. Well, well mm-hmm. I, I will rephrase that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Since I am no longer on, on stage. stage. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. There you go, John. <laughs> so. I, I really think uh, not only the rest of the members, but also uh, you guys for spotlighting uh, the achievements of the spinners. Mm-hmm. And we both Ronnie and me, we both thank you for your support. No, you got our support. And, uh, and Julian, you had a question? I'm sorry. Go ahead, Julian. Absolutely. My question is actually in the same vein of what you were just speaking to, Mr. Edwards, basically saying that we know talent is a major portion of success. But when it comes to longevity, of course, we know that professionalism goes a very long way. And there's no way you could have made it from, you know, the inception of the spinners to now into Rock and Roll Hall of Fame without being the consummate professionals that you are. I was actually watching an interview on American Bandstand uh, that you were present for, Mr. Edwards, where someone was talking about how up until that point, the spinners have never been late for a show. And the only time that there was actually a cancellation was uh, because of the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. So my question is that, you know, when you're looking at current artists and uh, new upcoming artists, do you have any tips or advice that you think that you might be able to share that can assist in their development that, you know, really stands the test of time that are you know, timeless traits for both of you. Come on. Well, uh, for me, I would say, remember, you did not achieve your success on your own. You have to have people working with and in front of you in order for you to achieve success. And you also have to remember that 
you are not singing in a vacuum. Mm. You are performing in front of people who want to leave the concert refreshed and with good memories. Absolutely. And you are going to have to make up in your mind to give them the best that you have. Well, that's, so that's good. I mean, that's that's quite you. powerful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very, very powerful, very powerful. So, uh, yeah, same situation. Uh, Mr. Moss, do you have any uh, tips that you've gathered over the time that you've been? Yeah, I mean, to tag off of that, you uh, also, today's artist is, is, is totally a different, it's a different baby than what it was uh, in the past years. Uh, I'd say maybe as far as 15, 20 years ago, um, you have to, to be success, successful, you have to also be more business like mm -hmm. as well. I mean, to be uh, uh, successful, you got to enjoy what you're doing, but on top of it, you got to think ahead and say, look, I'm going to take it to this level, then I'm going to do this. You got to lay, you got to lay seeds because it could get away from you. It could get away from you mm -hmm. and then and it's hard to get it back because mm -hmm. you got a line of other people right behind you. Yeah. Want to take your spot, mm -hmm. you know. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. um, not not per se group, but just just successfully mm -hmm. uh, they want to be successful as well. Mm -hmm. And that's why I have to say some these some of these rap artists, mm -hmm. um, they they think uh, they think totally different than what we did and, and and people before us. They are making money outside of what they do now. Mm -hmm. They promote themselves. They put themselves out there, and and they are business. A lot of them. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you got to think that way now. Are there any artists that you like that you admire that are out there today, uh, Ronnie or John? Any current artists that you listen to or enjoy? Well, I, I'm I'm uh, old school myself. Okay, and uh, I've always enjoyed listening to Wilson Pickett. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bobby Womack. Mm -hmm, some favorites, yeah. And uh, Sam Cooke was my favorite. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I have a question. So you mentioned all these artists. Now, uh, when you go from working on your own to both of you joining an entity like the Spinners, you get to double bill or triple bill with some pretty outstanding other artists and entities as well. Do you have? Are there any artists or groups that that you got to perform with that stand out in your mind as some of your favorites? I would say uh, my my greatest time on stage it was the time that I had the chance to open the show. Was Sam Cooke. Oh, wow. wow. That's amazing. Now, was that as a solo, it was a solo artist, obviously, right? Solo. Is that solo. when you had Careful Man out? Was it around that time? Yeah. Okay. That's a good jam. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd say for me, uh, Gladys Knight. Okay. And for some reason, I have to say the, <laughs> the Boston Pop Orchestra. Okay. Wow. Really? It's, wow. Yeah, it did something to me when we performed with them in Nantucket. Mm -hmm. I just, I'll never forget that. That mm -hmm. was something. Mm -hmm. But performing with them and Gladys Knight mm -hmm. uh, was one of my, you know. Well, they got you out there a lot now, Ronnie. You're doing stuff. On, you, were in the, you were in the, thing. what, Thanksgiving Day Parade, I think, in Philadelphia? Yeah. <laughs> you guys yeah, are you're doing, you're doing it now. <laughs> that, was, that was awesome, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've done so much, I have to really... I can't, I forget about a lot of, mm -hmm. but yeah, that was incredible. Mm -hmm. We did Chicago before that, the week before that. Okay. And, uh, and then we did the, the Philly 
mm-hmm. we're in um, being on uh, GMA. Mm-hmm. And right. right, right. Who is who are the current members of the group? Tell us who the current members are performing with you right now in your group today. Um, um, Marvin Taylor, okay, uh, Jesse Peck, and CJ Jefferson. Okay, so now John, you had a chance to go out on stage with them recently, right? On on some shows. Was that in Detroit the last time you were out there with them? With the spinners? Well, there there was a uh, uh, it was a recent it, recent it, 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 right now I I cannot uh, recall was that Detroit yeah. Ron when you guys were together last right yeah, right. Yeah. right yeah that was the Motown week right. Right. right right that was a great event you know to have you guys all yeah. there you know that week was really really. Uh, Awesome. Yeah, I mean, good. that's all over Facebook and all over YouTube. You know, John Edwards, GC Camera, yourself, and all the rest of the spinners were all and together. Henry was there. there. You know, yeah, that was yeah. a great weekend. You know, I wish we had gotten out there. I was trying yeah, to get you guys to go out to Detroit with us, you know, yeah. to come yeah, see you guys. That, you know? I, mean, I wanted to be there. We so. had press all over the world. Mm-hmm. That was, yep. that was big. Mm-hmm. You're going to have press all over the world for the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame induction, too, you know? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, yes. Um, I. I'm going to be totally honest with you. I never stepped on the stage before or since my uh, time on this earth Mm -hmm. when I was not thinking that, hey, this is something that I always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. But I did not take any uh, realization that it was going to lead to this. Mm, wow. right. I never thought I was going to be possibly inducted into anybody's Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Well, well, listen, you got the track record. Kevin, you got the albums. What is that? Uh, Spinner's 8 you have with you there? Spinner's 8. Yeah, now, which right one? Our, we, had, we had a question about what your first album was, right? Well, right, Kevin? Wasn't it, Um, was it Yesterday, Today, and I think it's, what is that? What was yesterday, it? Today, and yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow. Yesterday, Today, and Tomorrow. Was that right. your first album with them, with the Spinner's? Uh, or was Spinner's 8 the first? No, I think Spinner's 8 was the first. Okay, because that has Heaven on Earth so fine. You sing lead on that, right? Right, yeah, right. That's a great track, man. So now, did, so you, did you get a chance to work with Tom Bell at that, yeah. at that period? Okay. Yeah. Matter of fact, that was my first meeting with Tom Bell when that uh, record was made and produced. Mm-hmm. So then came the next album, and then the sound of the spinners kind of changed with you with like working my way back to you. You work with different producers. What was that like? You're the new producer that you had for that? Uh, it, it, it was strange because I had never worked with a uh, producer that pulled that much out of me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, what are you talking about, Michael Zager? Michael Zager, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Michael Zager. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I think right now he is uh, uh, teaching in uh, a school in Indiana. Okay. Wow. But, uh, but uh, he just forced me literally force me hmm, hmm. to do the best that I possibly could because there was there was something about the way that he handled himself and demanded my best. I did not know that I had the last note on funny how times. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So you got a chance to work with him, and and that was a great album. Also, um, what other albums we have there? We have another we album. Have uh, love, love tripping, love tripping with love Cupid. tripping, Cupid, oh, love you for love. Yes. Whose idea was it? Michael's idea or your idea to put those two well, songs together um, for for that well, recording? I, I don't I don't know where all of these producers came from. 
because at the time the Skinners were uh, under the management of uh, Buddy Allen management. Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know how Buddy and his son, uh, Steve Allen, mm-hmm. uh, found these people. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm glad they did. Yes, they did. Yeah. Put some dynamite material, some, one of the biggest selling hits in the Spinner's history. I think it was Cupid or Working My Way Back to You, one of the biggest selling hits for the group. Yeah. Right. I have a quick well, question. Uh, the, the working My Way Back to You, I think, was uh, probably the best that I did at that time. Mm-hmm. And Cupid, uh, I mean, I, it just... Fell into line. <laughs> right, right. The whole Sam Cooke thing, yeah. right? Yeah. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, speaking of albums, I have a question for uh, Mr. Ronnie Moss. With the newer album, Round the Block and Back Again. So, what was the original thoughts on the concept behind the album? Because I'm listening to the title, and of course, I'm thinking, you know, it's celebrating longevity and consistency, but I'm listening to the tracks, and I'm hearing a lot of tones of, you know, maturity and, and really sounds like a, like secure men talking about real mature you know, uh, situations and, uh, it's not repetitive at all. It's, it sounds contemporary. I was listening to, um, what was it? Uh, missing your embrace. I'm hearing you guys talk about FaceTimes. I'm like, okay, it's current, but it doesn't sound like it's, you know, pandering to, you know, a, a newer audience or anything of that nature. So what were the thoughts kind of going into that and how you laid it out, uh, with the tracks? Um, you know, uh, there were different writers, uh, on that album, uh, press and glass produced it, but there were different writers and I and I'm uh, I'm gonna say that uh, we had uh, seasoned writers, and I think we had some younger writers uh, in it. Uh, there's one song that that was written especially for me, which was uh, um, oh my mind just left me uh, the wedding song. Mm. Let me let, let me get it here. Oh, oh. Matrimony. Uh, oh. And and holy holy match, and holy matrimony. Yeah, right. holy, yeah, matrimony. holy matrimony. I'm glad you got the I'm glad you got the album with you there. Hold it hold the album up so we can see. This is the new album from the spinners and it is called Round the Block and Back Again and Ronnie Moss is on that album and uh, congratulations on that new recording. Absolutely. All right. And uh, you got how many songs? About eleven or twelve or thirteen or fourteen? How many songs? Thirteen songs. Thirteen. Mm-hmm. Just waiting for the numbers to keep going. Right, right, right. <laughs> Thirty, forty, fifty, what do you what do you got? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, we we uh, you recorded a lot more songs than got were on the album, though, right, um, Ronnie? You said say that again. I said you recorded probably a lot more songs than than were on yeah, the album. Yeah, we did. Mm-hmm. We did, and then we uh, uh, Preston picked the songs that he okay. felt that he wanted on there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like he was saying that none of these songs sounded like mm-hmm. at all, mm-hmm. and uh, they got a different flavor. Mm-hmm. Now, I like the one you did with the, the Times cover you did with Show Me um, So it? Much In Love. So Much In Love. That's one of my yeah. favorites. I like so the, Much In Love, uh, yeah. yeah. That, that mm-hmm. was the uh, one we, we did. And, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I like that song a lot, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, that's kind of like you're working my way back to you, right? The cover of a song, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? <laughs> Got to have that on there, you know? <laughs> I, I, have a que- I have a question about, about the recording of the album because uh, it had been, what, nearly 20 years, if not more, almost 30? Because the last album before that was released in the mid-90s and it was the Spinners at their best under, it was, it was Dick Clark's album, right. uh, Dick Clark's label mm-hmm. that that album was released. And then there was pretty much radio silence on actual radio recordings right. uh, from the spinners up until very recently and I, and I haven't been around you guys for the better part of what 15 years at this point mm-hmm. uh, I've always heard rumblings of we're going to try to go back into the studio at soon at some point yeah. what what actually you know hit it on the head with let, let's get into the studio and do this um, well first of all this particular album uh, we what got us there, believe it or not, <laughs> was COVID. <laughs> right, right, mm-hmm. I, I kid you not, because we, we've always talked about it. And ever since I, I got with them, got with the guys, that was one of the first things came out of my mouth. But um, we never, never could get get to it. Never, 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 never we worked. And finally, when COVID came up, I guess that was one of the better things that came out of it we decided to be brave and record it. Mm-hmm. Wow. And we actually 
I mean, we recorded that album in the thick of COVID. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like you was almost scared to look at somebody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was that bad. Mm -hmm. And we and CJ and I, we were the only two that didn't live in Detroit at that time. Okay. And we took a chance and we flew to um I mean, there was nobody in the airport. Right. Oh, yeah. And we, we flew up there and we um, <laughs> actually did that album. We recorded it. Mm -hmm. We worked We worked at, at it, um, you know, through phone and, and conversation. Then we went up and did it, stayed in a hotel, and we knocked that album out during the COVID. Right. That's what we came up mm -hmm. with. What was the duration of the, rec of the time spent recording? We probably spent... Um, as far as the actual physical physical recording, we probably did it in a month. Wow. Mm -hmm. right. We should also yeah. mention the Henry Fambros on the album too. Right. You know Henry yes. was right there mm -hmm. with us. He did not want to he didn't you couldn't leave him out. Mm -hmm. he, yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't you wouldn't want to. No. That's that's awesome. He did awesome. not I mean he was right there and uh And I have to say Henry sounds like the first single that comes out from that album is the song called Cliche and it, I I absolutely love the song and to hear Henry uh, do the, the two verses on it with CJ yeah. following it's it sounds awesome. It sounds great. Oh yeah, that that and and, and uh one of my favorites that he did was uh uh I'm looking for my baby. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That is one of the sweetest. Henry Henry sings that song, mm -hmm. and he I mean he's into it, and mm -hmm. uh, I really love that song. Mm -hmm. John, I can John, I can only uh, imagine that you you probably uh, feel very very proud of the guys for continuing to, to keep mm -hmm. this thing going. Mm -hmm. I mean I mean it's unfortunate. I mean it's I mean, I'm sure it's, a, it's an unfortunate reality when anyone can't continue to be with a group that they love so much. But to see these young gentlemen keep the legacy going in your stead, I, I can't imagine that you have anything but like like fatherly pride for these guys. <laughs> I love it. Okay. It's a great show. <laughs> Listen, man, I I never thought that I would be included in someone's imagination mm -hmm. that. I would be even considered in any shape, form, or fashion for anyone's Hall of Fame. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And it hit me like a ton of wet mm -hmm. dish towel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's no <new> one. <laughs> <laughs> you know when the towel. When when the towel gets wet, it gets heavy. Yes, mm, yes. that slap. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Swap. <laughs> Swap. Mm. <laughs> That's the way I felt mm -hmm. when the news was first told to me. Mm -hmm. And wow. I, I think I have mm -hmm. large eyes now. Mm -hmm. You should have seen me then. Yeah, <laughs> but you know, again, and just give it a round of applause again for John, because you know what? Much deserved, brother. Much deserved, yeah. you guys, the spinners. Yeah. And long, long, overdue. long overdue. Long yeah. overdue. I just I just have to say this before, okay. before we mm -hmm. wrap this thing up. There's something really great happening here. And I don't know if a lot of people can appreciate this, but it is not often that you get a member of a group or a band who was with them, you know, and, and had great success. And then they have a person who is in the group today and they're sitting side by side. Mm -hmm. Right. See the love yes. and yes. you can see the yeah. friendship. Mm -hmm. And this is just one of those mm -hmm. spinners things. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I just, right. hey, mm -hmm. I just have to say absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and this and this group, th this entity is it's. It seems like there, it's a lot of instances of that. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you see it when it, you have Henry and GC and the current guys yes, over yes. at Motown mm -hmm. when they're celebrating. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is, 
it is very much once a spinner, always a spinner. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. And yes. and the and the and the the familial aspect mm-hmm. of this group is astounding because, like Kevin said, you just don't see it that often. Mm-hmm. This this mm-hmm. is this is special. Well, mm-hmm. so, yeah. I want to mention also the late great Felipe Wynn is inducted into the R&B uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with you guys, John. What was it like? I, I, one of the first concerts I saw with you was when you and Felipe were together, and it was six of you, all six of you: Billy and Purvis, Bobby, Henry. And yourself and uh, Felipe, when you were all together in concert, what was that experience like for you to be all together then? One of the proudest times of my life. First, I was married to a great woman, and this one being with Felipe who uh, unfortunately is no longer with us. Mm -hmm. Billy is no longer with us. Bobby is no longer here. My man Purvis, he is one of a kind. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) to be even remotely associated with Felipe Wynn is uh, something that I will treasure forever Mm -hmm. because he was the original poo poo man. Mm -hmm. And I just uh, found myself enthralled with the way the spinners uh, formed on stage. And I'm very happy that when Felipe decided that he wanted to go on his own, I'm happy that the spinners thought of me and decided to take a chance on me. Mm -hmm. And I, I can only hope that I serve my time with the spinners and they even the new guys mm-hmm. they all are my idols mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you're definitely a powerhouse, John Edwards, and the spinners were good then. They're good now. You got a great group going on right today, and uh, we congratulate you again on being inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, um, gentlemen. Let's give them another round of applause. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you for Thank being you. on the RBC. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you both. And we look forward to seeing you on the road with the spinners. John, we look forward to seeing you in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And uh, congratulations again. And thank you for being on the show. Hey, thank, thank you, you very much. I want to also. Thank you so much. I want to thank my co-host, Julian. Thank you for being here today, thank man. You having me appreciate again. you being on the show. Yeah, and then uh, Kevin White. Always. Kyle Mack. Hey, man. And myself, Tim Marshall. Again, thank you, gentlemen. One more time for the spinners. Congratulations. Thank you. On your induction to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I'm Tim Marshall, and thank you for joining us for R&B Showcase Live.